Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to model a candy cane using a couple of extensions. I know we do a lot of uh, modeling with just standard native tools, but every once in a while I like to get into a shape that uh, shows off a couple of extensions. So two of them specifically we're going to look at. One is Fredo Scale, and Fredo Scale is actually a set of tools, but we're going to look at a radial bending piece for that. And then Curve Maker, which is a classic, been around for a long time, but uh, it does what it does and it does it well. So we're going to hop in and use those to create a candy cane model right now. All right, so I have the toolbars for both these. Both of these extensions are linked in the description. So um, you don't have to go into the comments and say, where can I get those? Can I have a link, please? Uh, what extensions are these? Both of them will be down in the description. I'm going to say that one more time. They're in the description. It's in the description. If you're looking for this, these extensions, check the description. Okay, so these are the tool to, two toolbars. We're going to start with Curve Maker. Now, Curve Maker does have shortcuts to different curve types. I can't tell you exactly what all these are. I know the one I want to do is this. This is a helix. So if I click on any of these buttons and I come in here and I click a point star and start at the origin and pull this out, this is what I get. Um, I can't set properties, anything like that. Uh, so yeah, this this can this can be okay if you're repeating drawing the same curve multiple times. In my case, I want to draw something. I want to put the values in from scratch. So I'm going to go to extensions, go to curve maker here and hit draw a curve. All right. So now I'm going to tell it I want to put a helix in and click OK. That's going to ask me what I want to do. So I'm going to start at zero turns and I want to go around several times. Um, let's say like six times. I want quite a few six inch radius. That's fine. We're going to draw a candy cane big and then shrink it down to the proper side number of sides per turn. I'm going to hit 24. This is incredibly important. So this is going to be one of the things that we we hit on in this particular video is number of sides because we're going to talk about aligning the number of sides for my helix to the number of sides for my circle. So I want to make sure they're the same. I'm going with the default, which is 24. And like I said, we're making this big. It's going to be six inches, six inch radius. So it's a foot across. So as what we're creating first is the candy cane stripes, basically. So as those go up, they're going to swing around and around what will be uh, the candy cane. So if it if it's a foot across, right now it's saying as it goes around one time, it'll be a foot higher. So that's not very good. I'm going to need like five times that. So we'll go with like five foot. All right. And I'll we'll click OK. And we'll get a spiral. Yes, that is a good looking spiral. I thought maybe I'd have to scale it, but I actually like that. That looks pretty good. All right. So when I create a spiral or, or a curve using Curve Maker, it shows up in its own group. So if I come in here and I pick on this, there you go. See, it's in its group. I'm going to come down to the bottom here. I'm going to create a circle. My circle is going to go from the origin point and I'm going to pull it out along the red axis till it hits, boom, the end of that helix. This is super, super important. Right, so the end of this helix should hit on a point of the circle. You see, we did this circle is if we pick on it and go to entity info, 24 sides, which is the default, and this this spiral is also 24 sides. That means if I go to any of these edges and go up, I should, while staying on the blue axis, hit another point on that spiral. So any spot. So I'm gonna pick this one right here, we go straight up. There it is. So that's important. If I had 36 sides on the circle or on the spiral, which is the default, then that wouldn't line up unless I changed my circle to 36 sides also. All right, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna double click to go into the helix and I'm gonna pick this. When I pick it, it's gonna pick the whole thing and I am going to use rotate. So I'm gonna go to the middle. This is already highlighted. I'm gonna pick where it starts. I'm gonna hit my modifier key to make a copy and I'm gonna take this one, two, three points out. Again, making sure that this snaps to a point. So see how it turns into a green circle? I'm snapping on a point. That's perfect. All right, so that's going to create, that's going to intersect with our candy cane and give us a nice big uh, stripe that's going to swirl all the all the way down. I also I want to make a big stripe on one side and a small on the other side. So I'm going to do another copy. I'm going to bring this one around to the opposite side. So again, on a point, 
boom right there. And this is gonna be a, a thinner uh, curve. So it's gonna go like that to, again to the next endpoint, green circle. So we have a thick ribbon on one side, a small ribbon on the other. That's perfect. Yep, looking good. All right, I'm gonna click outside to leave that group. You see my, my, my uh, circle here is separate. I'm gonna push pull that all the way up to the top. I'm gonna to just inference the top of that point there. And there we go. So something very important is happening. If I go up to view and I show hidden geometry, you'll see those edges that come through. So if I look at this, this edge is flat along that piece. So each of these, each of these faces, the curve should break at, and that's what exactly what's happening right now. That's perfect. These should, if it wasn't, if these were wrong, if these were like lapping inside and out, then we'd see white spaces where the curve goes behind the face and that sort of thing. But we don't see how they, they're just right on the surface all the way up. That's perfect. So I'm going to go to view, turn hidden geometry off, and the next step we're going to do will really show if that's right or not. So I'm going to grab that group by picking anywhere on it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to explode. That takes those groups out of context. It makes them intersect with the rest of the candy cane. And, and look what happens here. I'm gonna undo real quick. See how they're thick edges right now? They're profiles. So that means they're separate geometry. They're not, they're not connecting any, any faces together. But when I right click and I explode, see how they turn into thin lines? That thin line is indicating they have a face on either side. That's awesome. That means everything turned out perfect. If you're playing with this and you're finding out you do this and then you got these janky lines that don't attach, I'm guessing nine out of 10 times it's because your circle's one number of sides and your helix is a different one. If they're the same and they're off of the same center point, then they should break like this. That's awesome. Let's go ahead, let's put some colors on here. So I'm gonna bring up my colors. I'm gonna grab the reddest red I got. I'm gonna come in here, click right here. <gasps> Yep, it went all the way up. It didn't color the white at all. We'll do the same with this one. Yes, beautiful. I can even modify this a little bit if I want to. So I'm gonna swing around back here and let's say I want to actually double up the small line. So my candy cane takes this line and it has it over here. So this is a double line, a big line here and then two here. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna again use rotate, go to the center point. I'm gonna grab this right here, hit my modifier key to make, an, make a copy. Look at that, see, see, and see, see how it, see how parts of it disappears because it's behind right now. So I'm gonna go to right there on a point, click. And when that merges together, again, same thing, beautiful. This is a separate face from this, separate face from this. That looks awesome. That is a cool candy cane. If you're doing one of those candy canes like a peppermint stick, guess what? You're done. This is finished. All I gotta do is triple click, make that a group. And uh, you can put that in a jar and sell it in your candy shop. In our case, we're making a candy cane. So what we want to do is make this bend over at the top. So there's a couple ways you could do this. I know some people are probably going to ask, could you have done this with follow me? Follow me works for a lot of stuff, but for this particular thing to bend it, follow me would not uh, maintain this spiral as it follows along a path. So we do have to take the geometry afterwards and bend it. There's a couple ways I could think to do this. Um, we're gonna do it the simplest way I can think of, and that is using Fredo scale, specifically radial bending. That's right here, this, this command right here. Uh, I'm gonna come in here. What radial bending is gonna let me do is pick two points, the start and end of my bend, and then grab it and pull it and bend it. Um, it will pull it on an axis, so I wanna make sure that I stay vertical like this. So I'm, I'm gonna tap the left arrow key, that's gonna assure that I stay on the green axis. Now I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna bend from here to here. I want a little bit of straight on the end because that's that's how candy canes work. We click from here to here, then I'm gonna grab this end and I'm just gonna bend it down. Now this is going to limit you. I can only bend 180 degrees. So when I click, there's my candy cane. It looks pretty good, but candy canes usually have a little bit more of a bend, right? Because this is this is gonna slip right off of a tree branch. So I wanna bring this down just a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it again. I'm gonna go to radial bending one more time. I'm gonna lock into the green face, click from here across to here, and then we're just gonna take it and just, just a skosh more, just like that. There we go. That's called branch lock. That's how that, that uh, that's intentional. All right, so that looks pretty awesome. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit more. I'm gonna come in here, select all by triple clicking. 
So I click click one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> Can't talk and click apparently. And I'm gonna right click and I am going to come down to deselect. And I'm gonna deselect faces. All I want is edges. So now that I got all the edges, I'm just gonna turn them off. So I don't want to see them. Oh yeah, that's a candy cane. Look at that. I don't need those edges in there. I just need those colors. Sweet. Last step, I'm gonna hit scale. Bring this down to a more appropriate scale. There we go, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna move that. We'll stick that right up here, right in front of three. Yeah, that's, I, okay, that's, that's a little spooky. We've got some stranger things happening now. But yeah, so this is about the size of a candy cane compared to a, a person, a person height. Uh, there we go, that's our candy cane. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna stick that right back down here. And uh, there we go. One quick and easy extension candy cane for you all to enjoy this holiday season. Like I said, there's some other ways we could have done that. We could have taken a projected texture and put it on there and tried, uh, you know, like do a follow me and have it follow right along the path of an image and then project the image on there. We could have broken into multiple pieces and used true bend to bend one of the pieces and connect the other pieces up. Um, I'm sure there's some others. You guys let me know. If you had to make this, what, how would you have gone about it? And again, the, the important part is, of course, the, the stripes, right? It's, it's not a candy cane. It's, I don't, just making a cane is not the same as a candy cane, right? Spirals going up. How would you do that? Let us know down in the comments. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, leave us a comment down below. I love making these videos. We make them for you, but I want to make sure they're showing something you want to see. So if you have a different way to do this, tell me about it. And if it's a, it's a cool way to do it and it's a good way to do it, maybe we'll spotlight it on another video coming up. Or if you have an idea of something you want to see modeled, uh, don't know how to do something or something like that, tell us about that in the comments too. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more. We'll show it something you want to see. Thank you.